or muted. And um, I would like to invite you still to participate in the discussion while we are presenting various initiatives on food and biodiversity. And you can do so by writing your questions or comments into the chat. Make sure that you address everyone so that we can read your questions. And after the presentation, I will uh, uh, take uh, select a number of questions and then read them to the presenters in order to have um, then the questions, uh, uh, the answers after the presentation. Um, you may ask these questions anytime presentation of the speakers. Let us now have first a look at the results of our survey. We have at the moment um, almost 50 participants in the session, and we can see that uh, the majority of the participants are companies. We have also a number of associations as well as uh, and NGO representatives and uh, the lower number also certifiers, standard organizations, uh, the public sector authorities are attending. That's uh, wonderful and I would um, like to invite you already to join the next question which we have prepared and this question is to get an idea how much you have already experienced collaboration on biodiversity in the food sector. So the question is, is your organization or your company already engaged in an initiative on biodiversity in the food sector? Are you active in, in a network or working group discussing already these issues, identifying solutions? You have uh, another two minutes to answer to, to this uh, question. Now, before getting started, um, I would like to send to you the, the agenda as well as the background of this session. The goal of today's webinar is to encourage you to get involved in biodiversity initiatives in the food sector. We trust that after the session, you have a better understanding about uh, the opportunities for collaboration to tackle the loss of biodiversity in agricultural landscapes. And the loss of biodiversity is evident and it's not new. Nevertheless, I would like to highlight two studies which recently have published. It's on the one hand, the fifth global biodiversity outlook, which was just published this week, which indicates that none of the 20 global IG targets to halt the loss of biodiversity were actually met. And secondly, our friends from WWF released two weeks ago the Living Planet Index. What you see in front of you is obviously not the Living Planet Index, but it's the development of the MSCI World Stock Market Index covering more than 1,600 stocks from companies throughout the world. Um, we see an increase uh, which we would like and hope to see also for development in biodiversity. But the curve of the animal population, which is here from the Living Planet Annex Index, shows that we had an alarming average drop of animal population since the 70s of about 68%. And what we witness here is that if this was a stock index, we definitely would see unprecedented interventions of governments throughout the world to stop this decline. The food sector plays an important role still to stop this trend. And therefore, the Global Nature Fund and partners from Europe started four years ago the Life Food and Biodiversity Project. Our, our project aims to support the food sector to improve its biodiversity performance. And we do that mainly by supporting standard organizations and food companies to include effective biodiversity criteria into their schemes and sourcing guidelines in providing training modules, trainings, tools, uh, such as the biodiversity performance um, tool. 
In order to make this sustainable, we, of course, try to set up and embed these um, actions into networks and initiatives. And that's um, the topic of today's session. So instead of each standard setting organization or company to start in an individual process to tackle the issue of biodiversity, we believe that a coherent, harmonized approach is what most stakeholders from the food sector strive for or want to strive for. And that's why we embedded our initiatives and our project in existing initiatives, respectively in establishing initiatives. And today you will hear three presentations of 15 minutes about these national food sector initiatives, each presented by two speakers from business, academia, or NGO. The first presentation will highlight the exciting German initiative, which is just about to be launched. Our speakers will be Marion Hammel from the Lake Constance Foundation and Kai Stober, CSR manager at the retailer Kaufland. The second presentation will come from Spain by Jordi Domingo, his project manager at the Fundación Global Natura, and Marta Sioane, a technical manager at CONAMA, and they will provide insight into the activities of the food sector in Spain. And the final presentation will come from Portugal. We have uh, Carlos Teixeira. He's a postdoctoral researcher at the Instituto Superior Tecnico and Mafalda Evangelista from the Business Council for Sustainable Development, who will present the brand new Act for Nature Portugal initiative. Before we start with the presentation, let's have a look at uh, the, the poll result. And um, we see that there's already quite a number of participants who have already experience in networking, in collaboration on the biodiversity in the food sector. So 30 of, of 57 participants have already experience. Um, only eight say none and seven say that they are planning it and 12 we have not received an answer so we hope that with this presentation we can really motivate you to get engaged and to get an idea why others are already working in these um, initiatives and therefore i hand over to marion and kai for the presentation of the german initiative Yeah, good morning. Good morning to the cyberspace <laughs> and wherever you are. And my name is Marion. I'm the managing director from the Constance Foundation. And I will do the presentation together with Kai from Kaufland. And we will present you the German initiative, which is just in, in on its way to be um, if, uh, operative in January 2021. The next one, Kai. Kai, the next slide, please. Okay. Ah, yeah, this was one too fast because the, uh, the loss of um, biodiversity and its impact on the food systems is now really very well known and, and not confirmed only by environmental organizations, but also by the food sector himself, which is recognizing that this is a serious threat and uh, that urgent action is needed. And, uh, as Stefan told, it's a complex problem and uh, to solve it requires joint action and companies often say that they are working together the, uh, on complex challenges, etc. But not very often they are really doing it. So we um, 
think and we hope that the German uh, sector initiative will be uh, yeah, a really good starting point for an effective and also for faster action because this is urgently needed. The next one, please. Yeah, this is our, uh, or this is what will be the German food sector initiative. And we started with an uh, initiative group uh, composed by 15 actors, which are now working together since more or less one year to uh, prepare the initiative. And these actors are food companies and food retailers, uh, food standards, uh, some agricultural organizations, environmental NGOs, and scientific institutions. And what we prepared within the last year was uh, the statutes, because it will be an association and this association will be officially presented in January 2021. We prepared the statutes and we prepared a self-commitment, which every member of the association will sign. And this self-commitment includes points such as uh, motivation to take biodiversity protection seriously, motivate also the whole food sector, not only uh, the colleagues within the company, to implement a basis set of biodiversity crit criteria, which I will present later. And what is very important to assume uh, appropriate share of the costs for implementation of measures, as well not to leave alone the farmer with the costs uh, and uh, yeah, not contributing to them. Biodiversity monitoring system to implement it is also an important point of the self-commitment as well as training for farmers, assessors, certifiers, but also for managers which are responsible for certain uh, raw material or for quality or for, um, for buying things. So uh, another point is uh, um, to increase the awareness raising towards the final consumers. And of course, it is very yeah, logical and useful to have joint research and joint pilot projects within the sector initiative and to be willing to exchange the results and to yeah, exchange the lesson learns. Uh, influencing the legal, political, the legal and the political framework towards more effective biodiversity protection is also an important part of the self-commitment. And of course, we uh, will uh, try to play a role in the common agricultural policy as well as in the farm to fork uh, strategy and other uh, issues. The next please. Yeah, this is just to remember that biodiversity responsible agriculture, we are always uh, looking uh, not to put biodiversity friendly agriculture, but responsible agriculture. This requires on one side biodiversity management and on the other side very good agricultural practices to reduce or to avoid negative impacts on biodiversity. And the next please, Kai. And these are the two lines uh, of our basis set of biodiversity criteria. And this ba basis set of biodiversity criteria is really an important element of the sector initiative because it defines what the sector initiative understands as biodiversity responsible agriculture. Mm -hmm. 
It is not a biodiversity standard. This is important to underline because we want that existing standards and existing sourcing rules of uh, companies, as well as requirements for members of a cooperative, etc., that all these existing tools improve and consider the basis set of biodiversity criteria. And this set includes 60 requirements for standards and companies, as well as for farmers. And you see again, there are requirements regarding biodiversity management, which is uh, um, to have a baseline and a biodiversity action plan, to have a minimum percentage of natural vegetation on the farm, to improve the protection of habitats, to create biotope corridors, measures against invasive alien species, but also measures to protect uh, or improve the protection of protection a protected species. This is one big line of the uh, basis set and the other is this very good agricultural practices. Why very good? Because with good agricultural practices, we are not achieving the goal of stopping the loss of biodiversity. And this very good agricultural practices includes uh, requirements on all those aspects which are negatively affecting biodiversity, which uh, is fertilization and missing protection of soil, crop rotation, a complete implementation of integrated pest management, because uh, very often it is even not defined or not completely implemented. The efficient use of water and not only use of water, also protection of water sources, the origin of feed for animals and the density of animals in regard to the uh, production surface. And we included even some requirements on agrobiodiversity. So this is a big set of biodiversity criteria, an ambitious set. And uh, our members uh, or the members of the sector initiative will take the compromise to contribute to, the, to its implementation. And Kai von Kaufland will tell us what is their roadmap and their plans and their measures which they are implementing currently to contribute to this aim. Thank you. So, thank you, Marion. Hello together. My name is Kai Stober. I'm from Kaufland International CSR Departure and I'm a CSR Manager for Biodiversity. Um, today I want to show you our actions in biodiversity, also in connections to um, the initiative management. Um, but shortly, uh, who's Kaufland? I think not everybody's knowing Kaufland, but after my presentation you will know Kaufland. Um, Kaufland offers uh, products as a retailer in the wide range for food and non-food. And when you don't know Kaufland, it could be possible that you know Lidl. Lidl and Kaufland are um, sisters of the Black Group, Schwarzgruppe. And Kaufland is located in eight countries with 1,300 stores and more than 130,000 employees. So, but now to the main topic, biodiversity. Um, I will show you our biodiversity management in four circles. The first circle is one of the new circles, is the initiative management. Uh, Marion talked before. Uh, the second is the project management, the third the pesticide management, and the fourth the communication and assortment management. And I think the initiative management is new um, because temporarily sustainability is often seen as a modern competition between companies. I think that's a good development because um, every company will improve the sustainability in their supply chains. 
But um, I also think it is not possible to solve the problem as one member in the whole supply chain. Everyone is doing projects, but not everyone as himself could solve the problem of biodiversity temporarily. Because of that, we work together with all the members of the Biodiversity and Food Sectors Initiative. And um, yes, the first step is that we created a basis set and uh, we have the same commitment for biodiversity. So we create framework conditions together. And I think often uh, we have not uh, framework conditions from the politic, but now we have framework conditions in the whole supply chain, and we have it. Uh, we have a practical, uh, attainable uh, way to do it in the whole supply chain together. And um, it's really important that we improve that in our supply chain. It's only possible if we have the knowledge from our farmers, from the NGOs, and also from all the other um, members of a supply chain to improve it in the complete supply chain. So we talk together and we implement a good, I want to implement the set um, um, in the way of um, standards, for example, and I can't say it often and often in the way of um, partnership with your deliverers. If it's only practical, we could improve that, we could uh, uh, integrate that in our supply chain. And now we have a basis set, now we have a self-commitment, uh, what we are indicate in actual standards and what we are indicate in our supply chain with a partnership with our deliverers. So, Initiative management is really important now. And um, I will show you other projects with a connection to this. The second circle shows the project management. I think um, with this new circle, you will always see a connection to the initiative management. For example, the project management. Yes, we are an initiative, but we have to do things out of the initiative in our own company. Um, for example, uh, the project management shows a lot of projects, but I want to figure out two projects who are really important. And the first project is the biodiversity performance tool Marion talked before. Um, we tested the biodiversity performance tool at Deliverers and um, got good feedback, feedback of our deliver Deliverers. Um, with the biodiversity performance tool, we, our farmers know where they could improve their biodiversity with 78 indicators and key figures. So you know it's really difficult to make uh, biodiversity measurable. But with, at the end of uh, biodiversity tracking, he will get a biodiversity action plan and he could work on the points where, she, where is the biggest amount, where is the, the biggest uh, a problem at his farm to improve that. And if we have the chance to transfer it to all our farmers, we have also an overview. So we have the, the possibility to make the right projects to solve the problem of biodiversity. We not only make this project and this project, and we have um, really the aim for our eyes, what we have to do, what we have to do at first to get the biggest results for example. And a uh, second project I want to talk is our soil project. Um, it's really new. It's a kind of initiative. Uh, we work together with the Leibniz Institute and um, deliverers of us. And um, it's a scientific analyze to research the humus content and soil fruit, fruitness transfer the results of the practice. So our aim is to find out what our deliverers, uh, to, together with our deliverers, together with the institute, um, with scientific, scientific um, we want to develop practical solutions to transfer them to our suppliers, to support them because they can't solve all the problems by themselves. 
if we as a retailer say you have to do it, um, it's not uh, sure that he can't, can do it. So we have to work together. So the third point is the pesticide management. We started with a pesticide management since 2006. And um, you will also find a connection to work together. It's an example uh, how you could work together to improve topics uh, like uh, biodiversity. Um, in our pesticide manage, we follow the minimal principle. So we want to live together with our suppliers without pesticides. And only when it's not possible, uh, then we use the really essential pesticides. And it's only possible if you work together in the partnership and in long relationships. Then you find out what is possible, then you solve the problems together, and then you could create uh, documents or standards in the whole supply chain, for example, our Kaufland standards. This Kaufland standards include specifications, um, and the specifications include, for example, um, lists uh, of pesticides who are really dangerous for animals like bees or for insects, who are really dangerous for the whole nature, where we want not use in our supply chain. On that list, we develop year after year only with a partnership. And that's only possible with a partnership, with a long-term partnership. If you have every year new suppliers, you can't develop it. And yes, at the end, we controlled it. And we controlled it also at fields for, uh, for fruits and vegetables were really, really uh, sensitive. We go directly at the fields and control the, um, the residues at the field, for example. And the third, and for me, also one really, really important point is the communication and assortment management. Um, I will show you two samples of communication. You will see our homepage and you will see a report where we're talking about our pesticide management. And I think we have to address this topic directly to the customer. We have to, uh, to transfer the problem um, to people who should understand the problem because they um, buy the products at the end and they have to need help to understand which product, products could they buy to improve um, the biodiversity directly at our farmers. So we communicate that in all uh, medias like uh, Facebook, like um, supply chain, uh, sorry, um, uh, like um, Instagram and something else. But also we're talking over our sortiment of it. You will find in the prospect communication, um, when we are implement, for example, the basis criteria, we want to talk about it. We want to label it. Why We want to give a reason why. Why should the customer buy this product to improve this range? And so it's his own decision what he buy. But we want to help to understand this topic. And we want um, to communicate it directly to products uh, like our Demeter products with the Demeter Com Corporation or di directly with stories. For example, um, bee and insect hotels. Um, so it's more... Um, it's closer to our customers to understand difficult topics. And we are do that with a slogan, our actions do the talking. In German, machen macht den Unterschied. So with this slogan, we want to show our customer that he's also responsible for doing the action. He could change the situation too, as we, as everyone in the whole supply chain. Um, so, uh, I think so we could help our customers to do the right and we hope we improve our sortiment like people and um, I think there is a good development to more sustainability in the thinking of people, in the thinking of companies and so I would be really happy if more people come to initiatives to develop things like that. 
Yes, I'm at the end. Perfect. Thank you. I have a. Maybe you can. You mute yourself. And I have. I have three questions actually which came in and i think we can share it so the first one is uh, to to marion question who develops the biodiversity action plans for the farmers and then there are two questions to kai kai can you explain in more detail the ipm rules defined by kaufland and also to you, Kai, how do you control pesticide application according to your standards? Um, is it for the whole supply chain, products, or just selected ones? You have only about three to four minutes for, for these three questions, so try to be as precise as possible. And um, who wants to start? Kai, I think your, your mic is, no, but you, you start, my, Kai. So the first question is about more detail, the IPM rules, and the other one also to a certain extent related, how do you control pesticide application to your standard and which supply chains or products does it refer to? You have to unmute your, uh, yourself. Yes, the first question, the rules. Um, I have um, general specifications and binding specifications, and it's really difficult to to talk about it uh, without a, a diagram or something else. But they are a lot of higher um, than the law says, and um, I think um, I could um, show it better in the connection to our transparency report. Um, in our transparency report, uh, you could see the detail of the specifications of our pesticide management. So I'd like you to go to our homepage and look the details of our pesticide management. Um, and if you have any questions um, or if you have improvements, um, you could contact me directly um, because there are every point um, of our IPM management. Could you repeat the second question, please? Um, the second question is which products and supply chains um, uh, do you apply your standard and how do you control the, the application? Yes. Um, I will transfer to our uh, initiative. The initiative is um, uh, for the food products, uh, directly vegetables and direct products from farmers. And uh, our specifications are di directly to fruits and vegetables I talked about. Um, and how we control it? Um, we control it by, by our own audit management and also um, by standards. Um, I think it's a really difficult question and a really difficult point and temporarily talking about the initiative at Kaufland, how we can, how we could control it to the end of the supply chain. And because of that, we have to work together with standards and they have to implement and the criteria of our baseline of our basis set um, that we could check it by us by our own audits and also we could check it together with an add-on for example for example a global gap add-on um, so that our deliverers our um, farmers have not an additional system where check them so we have to use what we're doing now, where we have good results temporarily to improve that. I think that's the way we're going on this topic. Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> Mary, who supports the farmers in implementing, setting up a biodiversity action plan? 
Ja, uh, one support is the biodiversity performance tool, uh, which uh, Kai mentioned and is currently uh, in, in a test fa fast phase within uh, Kaufland suppliers. And the biodiversity performance tool helps uh, the farmers to make a proper baseline on the current situation uh, of biodiversity on the farm. And when I speak about biodiversity, the tool refers to mainly to habitats and other ecological structures, as well as to these uh, agricultural practices which could harm biodiversity. After having the baseline, the tool uh, defines uh, strengths and weaknesses uh, on, the, on the farm and it makes a recommendation of measures. So finally, measures for the biodiversity action plan. And finally, it's the farmer who decides which measures he will take. And hopefully he does not decide it alone, but with the help of an assessor of the standard or the, the companies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but he finally takes the decision which measures he will include into the biodiversity action plan, and then it's a management circle. No, the uh, biodiversity action plan should be implemented within three years, and it should be monitored. The performance tool will help to monitor and if you did not achieve your expected results you need to correct the measures and so on because biodiversity protection is an ongoing management issue thank you very much marion so you also wrote a few sentences in the chat i saw wonderful we continue now and travel on to spain I'd like to invite our colleagues from the Fundación Global Nature, Jordi Domingo and Marta Zioane from CONAMA to join our discussion here. And actually, we will not hear the classical type of presentation, but rather a dialogue. So I hand over to both of you. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. So, hi, Marta. How are you? Marta, I cannot hear you. You are mute. Check. Stefan, do you know if Marta is with us? Might be we lost her. I'm not sure. She's trying to manage. I had a text from her. <laughs> so I think you can continue until she will join again. Okay. So, um, we, while Marta is trying to connect, um, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we are going to uh, to explain. Um, we want to tell you about uh, the Spanish initiative uh, uh, for biodiversity uh, in the food sector. It's not actually an initiative like the one you, you just hear in Germany. It's uh, a different context and this is uh, why uh, I wanted Marta to join because uh, she works at uh, Fundación Conama, uh, which is another organization that enables uh, dialogues um, between organization. And uh, for, uh, for a long time, uh, we've been working together in different aspects, but in the last years, specifically in the food sector. And uh, I'm not sure if we can call this an initiative or, uh, or a Spanish initiative, but for sure is a is a very stable working group with the main players in the food industry in, uh, 
and, and food producers in Spain engage. So, so I think it's um, it looks to me like an initiative, but it's slightly different because of of the context. <clears throat> Let's see if uh, Marta is here with us. Unfortunately, not the moment, Jordi. She might have internet problems. She's not here. Yep. I'm not sure if we should uh, keep with the Portuguese presentation because uh, in our case, it was going to be a conversation between Marta and me, so it's going to be a look, it's going to look a bit weird if, if I, if I yeah. You can um, do this. Um, so let's um, um, continue with our uh, colleagues in, in Portugal. I hope, um, um, Carlos and Mafalda, that, that you're ready for your presentation. So we will continue with um, Carlos Teixeira. He's from the Instituto Superior Tecnico at the University of Lisbon, and Mafalda Evangelista. She is um, uh, representing the Business Council for Sustainable Development uh, in Portugal. And they will present uh, a new Act for Nature Portugal initiative. The, the way forward to mainstream biodiversity in the food sector is the title. So, Carlos, we are interested to hear how you mainstream biodiversity in the food sector in Portugal. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I hope you are um, hearing me uh, well. Um, and I would like to start by um, complimenting everyone, every participant uh, for being uh, with us uh, today. Um, my presentation, um, which I hope you are um, already able to um, to see. Um, my presentation is just an introduction, actually. Most of this uh, presentation on the Portuguese initiative will be presented by Mrs. Mafalda Evangelista from the Business Council for Sustainable Development here in Portugal. I myself, I am Carlos Teixeira. I am a postdoctoral researcher at uh, the University of uh, Lisbon. And the University of Lisbon is, uh, is actually one of the oldest and um, largest uh, uh, universities uh, in Portugal. Um, we are, my team, we are in uh, the Higher Technical Institute, the Instituto Superior Técnico in Lisbon, um, uh, which is the most important, most relevant engineering school uh, in Portugal. And most of our activity is done through a research center, which is the MarTech um, um, for environmental research. And um, in, in our case, as a team uh, in the IST, we started by um, trying to mobilize companies here in Portugal in the food sector throughout the last four years in the context of the Life Food and Biodiversity Project. And before I address the issue of an initiative in itself, uh, I should stress that the mobilization of companies here in Portugal was then through several of the different tasks involved in this project. And we started by uh, trying to involve um, and raise awareness and interest in some of the largest retailer retailer companies here in Portugal through um, through the through an attempt to implement measures to promote biodiversity uh, in farms and particularly in farms that supply uh, meat uh, uh, which is extensively produced in an extensive manner uh, here in the south of Portugal and we have done this implementation of measures in several farms that supply two of the largest uh, retailing companies here in Portugal, Continent, which is a Portuguese uh, retailing company, and Intermarché, which is uh, probably well known to you uh, and has uh, and is distributed in several countries. So together, these two, um, these two supermarket chains here in Portugal, which almost a total of 1,000 
stores, and we have done some implementation of measures in, in some specific farms that supply these companies with meat, um, particularly meat that is then labeled under two main labels, one from Continent, which is the Club de Produtores, and one from Intermarché, which is the Programa Origens. Um, but we've also done some sharing of knowledge regarding biodiversity uh, all throughout the project. And we've started by doing it, for instance, with a company, a multinational company, Bell, French multinational company, that is also present in Portugal and particularly in the Azores uh, Islands, the archipelago of the Azores Islands. Um, once again, we've tried to focus on a certain label, and in this case it was uh, a dairy, a dairy uh, label, uh, which is called uh, Programa um, uh, Leite de Pastagem, so fil milk from, from pastures. Uh, but we've also uh, worked um, in transfer of knowledge with Terra Maronesa, which is uh, uh, a label connected with a sustainable manner of producing traditional cattle uh, breeds, one particular particular um, traditional uh, cattle breed uh, in the north of Portugal. And of course, we've done also some consultation uh, with other companies and with, uh, for instance, Portugal Foods, with, which, is, which is an association of um, food companies here in Portugal more than 140 food companies are uh, members of this organization. We've done also some consultation and presentation of recommendations as well as, well as training sessions to Pingu Dos, for instance, which is um, a, a, another of the Portuguese, one of the Portuguese largest retailing companies, but also we've done some presentations to Lidl and Aldi uh, here, uh, here in Portugal. And finally, some, some certification companies were also uh, contacted uh, uh, and we had interesting conversations um, here in Portugal. Kiva Sativa, for instance, uh, the Burio Veritas, the Portuguese chain, and SGS. And of course, we cannot forget that even the screening of guidelines, which was a very important uh, first task in this project, was then um, looking at the guidelines of several other companies. But regarding the implementation, actual actual implementation of, of uh, actions in, in pilot farms, we've done that not just with companies supplying continent and intermarché, but also with other farms that are managed, managed by a, a variety of, of uh, private entities here in Portugal, such as uh, Herdados Gros, a, fam a very famous farm here in Portugal, but also Caporal and the Casa Agrícola Manuel uh, dos Santos, Herdado fresh to meio, um, etc. And what have we done there? Well, in total, uh, in 11 main pilot farms, which comprise more than 5,000 hectares of agricultural surface in the south of Portugal, we've done measures that fo mostly focus on the conservation of Montado, the Dehesa, which is also uh, how it is um, referred to in Spanish which is a very particularly important uh, agro-ecosystem um, in the Iberian Peninsula, which, because it's very rich in biodiversity, but it's also highly productive and uh, very important from uh, even a, a climatic uh, point of view. And what have we, have we done there? We've done a series of uh, uh, measures to implement and demonstrate. An example was the installation of tree protectors to safeguard the, the regeneration of the montado. So with these protectors, we protect the, the young uh, saplings of uh, cork or oak trees, and we try to protect them from the, the trampling uh, and, oh, and other activities that cattle uh, have in, in the field and, um, and which may, may actually be very damageable to these uh, young uh, trees. But we've also done other measures, for instance, the reducing and the suppressing of uh, soil mobilization, uh, not just when sowing by applying, for instance, direct sowing, so, uh, but also when we are uh, managing the weeds or when we are controlling the shrub growth. So avoiding mobilization of the soil is very important in the, in the arid and semi-arid habitats. Um, and in the Iberian Peninsula, this is, this is very relevant, is one of the most important measures. Uh, but we've also uh, promoted the implementation of something as simple as a livestock management plan 
that may allow for the livestock density, for instance, to be better controlled by, by the farms. And um, at least two companies have also um, integrated new criteria, which we have advised and uh, discussed with them into their own guidelines or on their labels. And these, uh, these criteria um, were very um, uh, heterogeneous. Um, at least 20 quite different criteria were integrated in both cases. And this is just, these are just two examples. Uh, for instance, um, a, a very important criteria to always have in place is the, the average livestock density um, in relation to the, the further service, the further production surface of the farm. But also uh, criteria such as the frequency, uh, how frequently does the farm um, actually perform soil analysis, taking into account the microbiota, so the microorganisms present in the soil, um, and, and for instance, how, how frequently do they manage to do some uh, soil, uh, nutrient balance analysis of the soil. And uh, of course, we try to mobilize companies into a, a Portuguese initiative. And we started by uh, focusing on the work that we um, have done in one particular particular workshop that gathered together uh, representatives from companies, but also producers and consultants and technical advisors. And a few conclusions were taken from from these uh, these workshop. For instance, there is a very high high um, consensus um, and motivation among the, the stakeholders for particularly uh, the, the, the importance of developing consumer dissemination campaigns, uh, but also how important it is to include in the common agricultural uh, uh, policy um, some measures focused on biodiversity. The adoption of new technologies, tax incentives are also very important. And then, of course, we have came into contact with the Act for Nature a Portugal initiative launched by, um, promoted by uh, the Business Council for Sustainable Development uh, here in Portugal. Uh, Tiago Domingos, our scientific coordinator, is also part of the uh, advisory board of this initiative. And we have supported this initiative since the beginning because this is a very good opportunity for food companies here in Portugal. And I would like to uh, invite now uh, Mrs. Mafalda Evangelista from BCST Portugal to proceed with her presentation. Hi, thanks a lot, Carlos. <laughs> and uh, thank you to all the organization for inviting me for this session, for uh, to Carlos especially and to, and to Stefan. I think you are all seeing my presentation. Okay, so thanks a lot. As as referred by by Carlos, I'm I work for the Business Council for Sustainable Development in Portugal. I'm currently head of sustainability knowledge. Uh, we are a multi-sectoral business association with the aim of promoting sustainable development among uh, businesses uh, in Portugal. And um, as referred, we also include among other sectors. We also include food sector uh, companies, um, especially large companies in, in Portugal that integrates all the all the value chain of, uh, of food sector. So uh, starting to present uh, our initi initiative and thanks a lot for for the previous presentations that were quite uh, quite interesting. Our initiative is a, is a bit uh, it's a bit different. Uh, it aims to catalyze uh, companies um, for this uh, topic of protecting nature and what is it is a, is a is an initiative that is inspired in an existing initiative that was launched previously in france by um, one of our um, partner uh, entity within our global network of uh, wbcsd that we integrate uh, uh, the entity is l'entreprise pour l'environnement. It's the the business association in France that uh, at the first time launched the Act for Nature International. So uh, we wanted to, within the, um, our partnership within the Business for Nature uh, coalition, international coalition, we have committed uh, in Portugal 
to implement a similar um, initiative. So this is like a national call to action for business in in Portugal to commit uh, with uh, to reverse biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation. This is this is, the, the basis of this initiative is uh, or are the voluntary commitments, voluntary commitments from companies. So within this um, within this um, initiative, we also uh, invited other partners. This is an initiative promoted by BCST Portugal, with some of our company members, and we also have invited some organisation, a multi a multi stakeholder um, uh, within a, a multi stakeholder partnership. We have also invited some entities and personalities to integrate our advisory board. So the commitments are um, split into groups. We have. Uh, um, we have 10 common 10 common commitments that are uh, the same uh, as the commitments of the international act for nature international those uh, 10 commitments were um, agreed by all of the ceos that started to work on this uh, on this uh, initiative as well as by other other partners that also integrate some ngos some uh, public entities and some scientific uh, partners as well um, and they aim to integrate biodiversity to promote the integration of biodiversity into the corporate uh, strategies and the all the um, if you had, have the opportunity to analyze these ten uh, these ten commitments, all they um, are integrated in the first one, but they are being uh, they are then uh, being split into actions until the tenth, and we have uh, a particularity in this uh, in this uh, business and biodiversity initiative that we are asking to and we are asking and companies are committing to publicly report in an annual basis uh, the implementation of their uh, their commitments so uh, but i said the, that we uh, these commitments split into these 10 common commitments that uh, companies um, are committed with and they also have individual commitments they uh, these inv individual commitments must be related to their own um, specific activities they have to be related with their uh, material uh, activities and um, with the material sustainability topics that they identify in their uh, material materiality analysis. So um, these individual commitments must respond. They are, of course, um, additional to the 10 commitments, but they are related to them and they are related and they are very specific of the company's uh, activities. Who can commit uh, any company? Uh, of any size and activity sectors companies, but um, uh, in, for the, specifically regarding this uh, the food sector, we think that uh, uh, we are getting pretty much interest from companies from the the food sector. Uh, some of the companies already are starting to engage, but we have received also um, pretty much interest. From from other companies uh, as well, companies that are not our company members that are pretty much interested in this, uh, in committing with Act for Nature Portugal. So, um, there are no costs also to become a signatory. This is our uh, our calendar. Uh, we have launched this initiative in May. Uh, now uh, we have received the first uh, commitments in the beginning of September, and next uh, next Thursday we are going to. Um, 
to debate the, the, the challenge of integrating biodiversity into corporate strategies. We are going to announce the, the companies that are already engaged in this process, but their own, uh, their own uh, um, com individual commitments will only be launched and disclosed later. later. So yeah, we have now presented the, their commitments to the advisory board, and now companies are integrating some some suggestions, suggestions. I'm sorry, and some and their contributes. So they are integrating them in the in their individual commitments. And then we are expecting to launch the, uh, as soon as possible the their own individual commitments. So uh, after that, we uh, in, within the initiative we aim to. Um, Continue to debate and highlight the challenges of uh, by integrating biodiversity in in the corporate strategies. We are start. We want to start to debate specific topics like uh, how to assess uh, impacts and dependencies, uh, which indicator indicators should should be used uh, by companies, etc. And. I want to highlight also that this is a, a long term initiative. Uh, this is not this is a process. This is um, it will be an engagement process. It will be an improvement process. And this is not an end with uh, with launching and disclosing the individual commitments of, of companies. We want to continue to work with companies in this in this process for this decade and uh, we will have a new a new phase to um, to have new commitments in the beginning of 2021 and then we'll ask companies to update their own uh, commitments uh, in a two years basis until 2030 so now uh, in 2020 we have already 16 companies committed Three of them are from the, the food sector, uh, one from the retail, one winemaking sector, and another one, a biggest, uh, one of the biggest companies in Portugal that provides uh, meals for businesses, for schools, for universities, etc. So, uh, and we also have some other companies that um, integrates their own activities in these um, that actually are part of the food sector uh, value chain as well. So um, uh, the name of the companies will, will be launched uh, next Friday. If you have interest, we will have um, a keynote speech from Eva Zabe from Business for Nature Coalition. We will also have a, a debate that will be uh, all in, in English. Uh, so uh, I invite you to, to participate if you have interest. The, you can register it in our homepage. Uh, the, our website is www.bcsdportugal.org. So take a look and uh, you can participate because part of the, the conference will be in English. Uh, and I can let you know that some of the commitments, uh, making a, a, a brief conclusion on commitments, we have received uh, several commitments. Uh, some of them are more direct and some of them are more in, 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 indirect. Um, regarding these uh, food sector companies, uh, I can say that some of them are pretty much related to with sustainable procurement, with specific aspects with direct impact on biodiversity. Um, we have also commitments of uh, supporting conservation projects, uh, sustainable farmers, promoting sustainable farmers, uh, farming practices as well, um, promoting and implementing good management practices for business and ecosystem services. And also um, in these are included awareness raising for business and, and uh, for biodiversity and ecosystem services, and as well uh, starting to report um, about these all aspects and uh, all these topics uh, and all about their, their individual uh, commitments. 
Just to finalize, I should say that this is um, a high complex uh, topic for some companies, although some companies already have started to assess in deep their relationship, their relationship with biodiversity and ecosystem services, especially their uh, impacts and their dependencies. This is still a high complex topic for some companies. Um, some already uh, started to, to monitor the, their activities, but uh, for some companies from some uh, sectors more um, far away from the environment uh, management, uh, and I'm not speaking about uh, uh, food companies and the food sector because this is the kind of companies that uh, relates with these topics for several years, but some of other companies like insurance, like banking, uh, service companies are a bit more far away from these topics. For uh, So for these ones, this topic is a bit more complex, more diffuse uh, and often uh, indirect and few are the companies for which biodiversity already integrates their own materiality um, uh, analysis. So um, we want within this initiative start to um, put these uh, relationships more clear for the companies from all sectors. And I think the companies from the food sector can give here a, a good help because they, uh, most of them already know their re relationship with these topics. And I think we'll have good examples to, um, to continue to catalyze other companies that don't see yet the, the more, uh, their own uh, relationship with, uh, with biodiversity. So thanks a lot. Thanks very much Mafalda for this insight and, and to hear that there's a good start of three companies and definitely and I suppose there will be more in the future from the food sector to join your initiative. I don't see any questions at the moment so I would like to encourage you still if you have specific questions to our two speakers from Portugal to put them in the chat and we probably then come back at the end of the session and raise it again. While we are now going back to from Portugal, our journey to Spain, you find also another survey on your screen. And as you noticed, we actually spoke only about national initiatives so far. Uh, we haven't spoken about uh, European initiatives and you heard that there has been development of a basic set of biodiversity criteria in Germany, that there have been pilots uh, in, in Portugal. So do you think there should be an European initiative on biodiversity in the sector? So you have a few minutes time to answer this question. And while you're doing this, we are now handing over to Jordi and Marta, and I hope that the line is stable now with Marta. So welcome back and uh, it's yours now. Thank you. I'm sorry, my internet connection dropped in the in the worst moment. <laughs> okay. Um, how are you, Marta? <laughs> Fine. Oh. My God. Marta okay. is low, I think. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as I was uh, telling you, well, thank you very much for attending. First thing, thank you very much for the invitation. And as I was saying, we are here today to tell you a little bit about the Spanish situation regarding the food sector and, and biodiversity. And uh, I would like to begin by asking to, to Marta, what is her opinion about um, about the the, the company's concern on uh, regarding biodiversity because uh, in my opinion I think we um, we haven't still reached the peak let's say but we are on the way and what I mean is that in the last decade there has been uh, very interesting uh, movements from from company side to explore environmental challenges not maybe biodiversity as a very specific topic but uh, for sure being one of the of the key aspects 
But yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, a first and very interesting milestone uh, was the creation of the Spanish Business and Biodiversity Initiative launched by uh, Ministry for the Ecological Transition and Fundación Biodiversidad. And well, I think it has been a success uh, as most of the big Spanish companies have joined. Uh, this initiative was created in 2013. And right now, I'm not totally sure, but I think that 25 large companies are part of it. So, well, this shows a growing interest, I think. Absolutely, I agree with you. And I think this was a, the very first step. And I also have to say that most of the more important food companies in, in Spain uh, joined the, the initiative. Uh, we are asked at Fundación Global Nature to present uh, this, this project, this life project, Food and Biodiversity in the in the initiative and and i think there was was really really appreciated because i would say that there was a need of understanding or having tools for for assessing uh from the env environmental point of view the the supply chains and and i have to say that even if we are strategic partners in the initiative i think it was really really uh, appreciated yeah 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 uh, i think uh, another proof is is uh, a growing that it is a, a growing concern is that at Konama, uh, we also have a, a working group about business and biodiversity. Uh, this group has been working since 12, analyzing the, the topics of the greatest interest uh, to companies in the, in the process of integrating biodiversity into their management and business model. Uh, in these years, uh, work has been done in different aspects, uh, communication, indicate, uh, mitigation hierarchy, always in the, in the Spanish sphere, but taking uh, into account international strategies and, and objectives. In this year, in, in 2020, uh, the group uh, wants to get closer uh, to small and medium-sized enterprises uh, since they are an uh, important part of the Spanish uh, business map, and in some way, I think uh, they are the big forgotten ones. Uh, as you pointed out, uh, starting supply chains in some sectors potential to be able to move towards greater sustainability of all production, manufacturing, and consumption uh, processes, as they are all interconnected. So. Well, I think the role of the small companies is very important now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, maybe, Marta, we should explain to, to the audience what's, what's CONAMA and, and what's the concept <laughs> of working groups, because I, I was telling that uh, we, we are talking today about uh, the Spanish initiative, and people maybe uh, know a little bit CONAMA and, and think about it as a, as a congress, but I think it's not really... Uh, yeah, yeah, not, not really, not really. Well, uh, I like to say that Konama is a, a platform, a platform to exchange knowledge and capacities, and also a think tank to make proposals uh, to drive a change uh, to low carbon, circular, and green economy. Uh, we try to create spaces for dialogue with, with our mission, the mission of Fundación Konama, is since 1992 to weave alliances in favor of a change of model towards sustainability among specialists in the environmental sector and between them and civil society. I think that the highest expression of this is the organization of the National Environmental Congress every two years. Uh, from our organization promoting the work and collaboration in the network of the different actors, companies, universities, corporations, researchers, well, it seems fundamental to us in the challenge of the climate fight. Well, we should say that CONAMA is uh, it's a, big, a big network, and the Congress uh, is more than an event because the prior process is uh, as important as the four days of the final event. Hundreds of professionals and entities participate in it. It's uh, an, a special uh, Congress, I think. The program 
is designed uh, with an open um, participatory methodology in which dozens of committees and working groups formed by professionals uh, help to draft the, the content of the Congress, representing an accurate sample of the sector's concerns. Uh, I think that Conama drives the project, but these committees and work groups uh, designed the, the program. Um, the last edition, uh, for example, in 2018, uh, 1,200 persons participate in the approximately 100 preliminary meetings in the Congress, and in the four days of the celebration, 8,000 people attended the 100 program activities. The yeah. mm -hmm. has become I think, the, the meeting point of the environmental sector in Spain. Yeah, somehow this is the, the, the big event, but as I, as I was saying, it's, it's not a, a normal Congress. I mean, at least for what people usually conceive as a as a Congress. And, and for me, as you mentioned, it's, it's, it's just a, a big network. And for example, for global nature, it, it was a, it, it is always the perfect opportunity to have a, a let's say permanent dialogue structures. And uh, when we, when we, uh, we, we've been cooperating with Konama now for, I don't know, a decade or so. So uh, we, we, we understood from the very beginning that uh, uh, this initiative with companies and biodiversity that later on was uh, redirected to the food sector. I mean, the Konama was was uh, the best uh, structure and the best place to go and and have those kind of dialogues. But anyway, coming back to the um, to the business and biodiversity topic, we are uh, we are addressing today the food sector. Um, I, I also agree that that biodiversity is a is a growing concern, as I was saying, and um, and probably I think one of the reasons is that, as you all know, we are a very relevant agricultural producers in Europe. So I think this pressure, this this growing pressure on biodiversity, as we've seen in the, in the previous presentation, is going from the market to the to the production areas, and of course to the to the companies that are in charge of. <clears throat> of production. What, what I'm not really sure after our experience and, and all the companies we have uh, uh, worked with during the project, I mean, the pilots, the companies, the, the dialogue process, the consultations and so on, as, uh, as Carlos was explaining, um, what we see is that uh, for the time being, environmental challenges are better understood than, than biodiversity. I mean, maybe this, because the environmental uh, sensitivity is not that mature, maybe, and well established yet. At least, like it looks, uh, it's established in in other countries. And of course, we have front runners. I mean, we have companies here in Spain with specific plans on biodiversity that are implementing biodiversity action plan and uh, and so on. But I would say that a lot of companies, uh, I would say the majority, for being honest, are still addressing for the first time. Um, aspects that go beyond compliance. So we are still in a, at the very beginning of, uh, of uh, addressing biodiversity in a serious way. Yeah, this is this was probably the reason for the creation of another group, the Sustainable Sourcing uh, Working Group, created in 2016 with with you, with uh, Global Nature. I think this specialization, uh, I mean, going from business in general to food companies in particular, was a need. And uh, the proof is that we had around 20 food uh, companies, five uh, public institutions, seven envir environmental NGOs, and, and other stakeholders such as uh, farmer unions with the standards, universities, communication companies specialized in the sector to position documents used and a new one is on the way this year. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, I have to say that that it wasn't easy, you know, at the beginning because uh, uh, I mean, at the end, what you have is companies from the same sector sharing, working together. But uh, the truth is that this flexible structure established by Konam, in which we have several meetings, online meetings, face-to-face -face meetings, 
I think it allows the companies to relax a little bit, let's say. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I think it's also a good chance for looking at, at, at each other. You know, it, it's in this place you can. I mean, you, you, you have the right to look what, what your competitors, what your neighbors are doing. And I think it's very interesting because people go there with, with a completely different uh, mind. And uh, anyway, I have to say that the progression of this of this working group was very interesting. Uh, I mean, the, what you see on the screen now is the first output of the working group uh, back in uh, 2016. Yeah, and it was called uh, Environmental Challenges in Sustainable Sourcing in the Supply Chains. So there were quite a few interesting companies uh, working there and cooperating. Uh, this document is, is a good example of, of what uh, of what Marta was explaining. Uh, we had to work quite a lot during months for producing this document, it's a 20 pages document. And, uh, and uh, Konama was the, the place to present this document and the conclusions from the working group. So now you understand that, that the Congress, it's just one week. The session about uh, this working group is just a few hours, but the work that uh, has been done is is quite more intensive, and this document was very interesting because it helped to define ourselves what we were and and what we wanted to do. So this is why we discover in the in the drafting of, of this document um, the common interests uh, we had. No, so, uh, so for for example, for NGOs, it was very interesting to understand what companies needed because it was not exactly maybe what we had in our minds. And of course, companies learn uh, plenty of things about biodiversity in that case. So it was kind of bridge for going from uh, an overall scene, environmental aspects to something uh, more specific like like uh, biodiversity. Yeah. yeah. Well, for, for us in, in charge of organizing the Congress, uh, laying the ground for these exchanges is, is great. But well, we also work for delivering results in the event. So I would like to make you a question. Uh, do you think uh, there is a tangible benefit for those who join the working world? Well, I would say that some companies uh, join the group and then disappear. I mean, it's uh, we'll see later on the companies that join and the, and the entities. So you see a kind of movement of people coming, having a look, and then going uh, in another direction or, or not being very let's say um, dynamic members but for sure uh because because and i think this happens because it's it works also as an interesting showroom to, to see what is what is happening what we have on the scene but yeah for sure there have there has been very interesting relationships i mean these uh this working group also gave the chance to companies and different NGO and different stakeholders to meet, to reach agreements between them. I mean, it's nothing exclusive from, from the group or from Konama. And we know we have participated in some of these uh, connections, let's say, but other companies too, and other NGOs too. And we know that there have been changes, changing, there have been strong relationships, partnerships, and, uh, but the good thing is that I think there has been a common understanding uh, about uh, biodiversity, so setting a, a good baseline. But um, also, and, and I think, and I have to be honest, I think we, we still have to wait a little bit to see a common movement. Um, I mean, uh, as a group, as a whole group, in terms of commitments for biodiversity. So we are reaching, uh, let's say one-to-one -one, uh, strong relationships, uh, very interesting progress towards biodiversity measures, so adopting really uh, measures, specific measures for biodiversity that change the company profile and that brings biodiversity to the core business. So this is but for particular companies. We are not still reaching all this for all the companies working in, a, in, 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 the, in the working group. But, um, we are doing also interesting movements. I, I wanted to show this document you have on the screen, which is another output of the of the working group, and it's called "Good Communication in Sustainable Sourcing." Uh, and once again, we are basically talking about uh, biodiversity. And I think it, it, it's um, 
a good indicator of, of the health of the working groups uh, uh, working for biodiversity in the food sector. And uh, first reason is that I think now all the companies, uh, because this this document was asked by the by the work by the companies themselves, so so it was like um, saying that communication is important for a company. If something is infor- important for being claimed for communication, in my opinion, is that it is important for for them. So uh, I think companies have definitely in mind that biodiversity is appealing at least for for consumers, and therefore something they have absolutely to work in the coming years so uh it's 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 on the table no way to to, to skip uh this thing and the second thing is that i think we, we really helped uh through these pages to um avoid bad communication in terms of biodiversity uh we avoid terrible mistakes that we often see uh in the companies talking about the biodiversity so it was a, a way of saying uh look uh, I mean, this is really important what we have in our in our hands. Uh, but you have to be very careful if, about what you say in terms of biodiversity, because now we have good metrics, we have good measures, we have good understanding of what are the main challenges. So it's much better if you talk about biodiversity to do it properly rather than. And, and if not, it would be better not to talk absolutely uh, um, about uh, biodiversity, but once again, it means that biodiversity is, is going directly to the, to the core business. Well, I, I see Stefan. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> don't worry, yeah, don't worry, Stefan. And, and I very much appreciate your dialogue. Thank you for the insight. And I have a question which we actually asked while you were also presenting the participants. And do you think we need a, a European initiative of the food sector uh, on biodiversity? Would the companies you are dealing with be ready and willing to work at European level? Or would you say what we got also sometimes the feedback from companies? No, for the moment, it's easier for us to start this complex issue and, and actions at national level. And maybe at a later stage, we go European interest despite the fact that, of course, we have international supply chains, global supply chains. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, we we asked the same question in, in our working group uh, I mean, for the companies if they wanted a national initiative, and, and, and the answer was more or less than uh, we were good as we were, as we are, and that, uh, I mean, it, maybe it was, it is just a matter of, of uh, having more maturity in the process and in these topics, but as you were saying, uh, sooner or later, these companies, even if they are the, the main producers for, for the supply chains, I mean, supply chains are international, so it makes sense to have a coordination because, and, and even some of the companies that work in, uh, on, the, on the working group are not national, but are international companies. So I think it makes sense, in my opinion, it makes sense, but of course, we have to be very careful and to go step by step. Yeah, I, I agree with Jordi. I think it's... We need more time uh, for the, for that for for the initiative for a national initiative now. Okay, thank you for that. So in the end, you are um, to a certain extent agreeing to what ninety percent of the participants of our poll uh, were saying. So ninety percent agree that there should be a European initiative. We didn't ask for the timeline, whether it should be immediately or we need a little bit of time, but there's a strong support that we need also to go on this topic at the European level. And of course, I think also at a certain stage at global level. I thank you all. I thank the, the speakers and presenters for, for sharing your experiences and your time. It's been wonderful to see that there's so much movement and that there's also new new developments. It's not an issue maybe like a climate mitigation, climate change, where we've been seeing a lot of initiatives being around for a long time. We see that it's slowly increasing and, and that's great that we're on the way to, to harmonizing also approaches which will help all of us. The farmers, the certification bodies, the companies, the standard organizations. And I think this is the way to, to go forward. I close with the announcement of uh, our next week's session. As 
there were already quite a number of questions about the biodiversity action plan. So you should join next week because next week we will talk about the biodiversity performance tool, which paves the way for a biodiversity action plan. We will have very interesting insights from those who develop biodiversity performance tool. Solagro, we will also hear how uh, companies uh, want to implement uh, or do already implement the biodiversity performance tool. And on top, the keynote will be from the European Commission from DG Environment, uh, bringing us um, news concerning the farm to fork and the biodiversity strategy. So thank you once more for attending the session. You saw in the chat also a, a link to a Google Doc which we invite you to fill in. It takes only one minute to assess the entire session. And thank you very much. Have a nice day and a lovely week. Bye-bye.